Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks. When a prominent Wichita business executive and civic leader asked for tax relief, his reasoning allows us to more fully understand the city's economic development efforts and nature of the people City Hall trusts to lead these endeavors. Here's what happened. In November 2013, the Wichita City Council granted an exemption from paying property and sales taxes to High Touch Technologies, a company located in downtown Wichita. Now, the application is of more than the usual interest as the company's chief executive officer, Wayne Chambers, is now chair of the Wichita Metro Chamber of Commerce. And the Wichita Chamber, along with its subsidiary, the Greater Wichita Economic Development Coalition, these are the main agencies in charge of economic development for the Wichita area. And under Wayne Chambers' leadership, these organizations are recommending that the City Council authorize a vote on raising the Wichita sales tax, partly for the purposes of economic development. So let's take a look at some of the aspects of this company's application and the city's agenda packet material. I'm going to quote some of the phrases and arguments contained in its application letter. For example, High Touch used the phrase, to demonstrate our commitment to Wichita. Well, this is ironic because High Touch is asking to be excused from paying the same property and sales taxes that most other people in business firms have to pay. I think that instead of commitment, this demonstrates hostility to the taxpayers of Wichita because they will have to pay more taxes so that this company can pay less. But even that irony is surpassed by the, is the spectacle, or chutzpah, I would say, of the incoming chair of a city's chamber of commerce threatening to move his company out of the city unless the company receives incentives. Well, Wayne Chambers, the CEO of the company, he also wrote that the incentives would be helpful in offsetting the substantial capital requirements. Well, I mean, who wouldn't appreciate help in offsetting the cost of anything? I think we can categorize this as unpersuasive. Well, the letter High Touch wrote to the Wichita City Council also mentioned the corporate stewardship programs, which refers to charitable contributions that the company makes. And underlying this argument is that because High Touch makes charitable contributions, it should be excused from the same tax burden that most of us face. But I've got a better argument. Be a good corporate citizen by paying your fair share of taxes. Don't ask for others to make up your share. That will let citizens make their own charitable contributions instead of subsidizing what Wayne Chambers and High Touch want to do. Well, the letter to the Wichita City Council also said that High Touch will answer questions regarding this project or any of our business activities. Now, this refers to how the members of the Wichita City Council will be asked to make a judgment that this business is worthy of subsidy and that other businesses are not. And the notion that the city of Wichita can decide which companies are worthy of tax exemptions and investment is an illustration of what the economist Frederick Hayek called a conceit. And it's so dangerous that his book on the topic is titled The Fatal Conceit. And the failure of government planning throughout the world has demonstrated that it is through markets and their coordination of dispersed knowledge that we best learn where to direct capital investment. It is simply impossible for this city government to effectively decide in which companies Wichita should invest their tax dollars. Nonetheless, the city council made the decision, and as we know, the council wants a larger role and budget for this type of activity. Well, the letter also mentions something called a payment in lieu of taxes or pilot. So High Touch is not proposing to totally escape its tax burden, only partially so through the pilot. But the proposed pilot payment is quite generous to the company. A few quick and perhaps imprecise calculations shows how small the pilot is compared to what taxes would normally be. Now, city documents indicate that the uh, proceeds of the industrial revenue bonds for high touch will be used to pay for 
$2 million worth of improvements. This amount of commercial property would pay about $60,000 a year in taxes. And High Touch, through the pilot program, is proposing to pay $33,000, just a little more than half of what the taxes might be. But the true value of the taxes being avoided is probably much higher. As an example, nearby office space is listed for sale at $28 per square foot, and that's really a distress level price. Applying that price to this building, its value would be almost $3 million. And if we look at market capitalization rates, which are generally given as from 9 to 11 percent for Class A space, we arrive at a much higher value. Well, various calculations could be used, but the value of this property could be almost $12 million, and taxes on that would be about $300,000 per year. Now, these are back-of-the-envelope calculations that may not be accurate, but it gives us an idea of what's actually happening in this transaction. High Touch is asking to avoid paying a lot of taxes year after year. But by offering to pay a small fraction as a pilot, the company appears magnanimous. Now, High Touch, in its letter to the council, also asks that the pilot payments be capped at that rate for a period of 10 years. So High Touch proposed that what it's paying in lieu of taxes should not be subject to increases. Everyone else's property taxes, of course, are subject to increases due to either assessed value increases or mill rate increases or the combination of the two. But High Touch requests an exemption from these forces that almost everyone else has to deal with. And High Touch also told the Wichita City Council that the tax exemption would lower the cost of office space. Well, again, who would not enjoy lower business or personal expenses? But the cost of this incentive spreads the cost of government across a smaller tax base than it would otherwise be, and that raises the cost of government for almost everyone else. Now, High Touch also told the Wichita City Council that the incentive would cause employees to be added to the Wichita office instead of other offices across the United States. Well, this is common. The threat of relocation or expansion elsewhere is routinely used to leverage benefits from frightened local governments. But these threats cannot be taken at face value. There is no way to know their validity. And... How valid is a threat from the incoming chair of a city's chamber of commerce to pack up and move his company to another city? Well, this company also told the city council that it would use the tax savings for expansion. And I think that implicit in this argument is that Wichita taxes prevent companies from expanding. True or not, this is a problem. If taxes are too high, we're missing out on economic growth. If taxes are not too high, but some companies seek exemption from paying them, well, that's a problem, too. And here's something else. In several newspaper articles from the past two years, Wayne Chambers bragged of how well his company, High Touch, was performing. So if we take Wayne Chambers at his word that his company is successful, then why does it need this business welfare? Economic necessity is usually given as the justification for these incentives. That's when companies argue that the proposed investment is not feasible without taxpayer participation and subsidy. But this argument was not advanced in this case. Now, interestingly, at the time of this application, Wayne Chambers was co-chair of Visionary in Wichita, which advocates for greater government involvement in just about everything, including the management of the local economy. And one of the benchmarks Visionary uses is to exceed the highest annual percentage job growth of the U.S., Omaha, Tulsa, Kansas City, and Oklahoma City. And as I've shown you on Wichita Liberty TV, Wichita badly lags the nation and these Visionary peer cities on this benchmark. Now, visionary officials don't want to present these results to government, perhaps on the theory that it's better to ignore problems than to confront them. But now, Wayne Chambers is the chair of the Wichita Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce, 
and under his leadership, the Chamber of Commerce recommends that Wichitans pay higher sales tax to support the Chamber's projects. Yet, Wayne Chambers engineered an exemption from paying sales tax and property tax for the expansion of his company. So, will blatant cronyism like this be the template for future management of economic development in Wichita? Well, let's hope not, as the working people of Wichita can't tolerate much more of our subpar economic growth. But as far as I can tell, we're in for more of the same failed policies, but with greater intensity and at much higher cost. Well, that's Wichita Liberty TV for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Bob Weeks.